Today I'm going to show you how to make your texturing process so much faster using Cinema 4D, Blender, and Substance Painter. All right, starting with Blender first, what we're going to use is a tool called Vertex Color. And what Vertex Color is, is it's basically going to apply color to vertices of our mesh, and we can use that as a mask in Substance Painter. So to do that, what we're going to do is in our Blender viewport, we're going to go up to the top left-hand corner and switch to uh, Edit Mode first. Now under this blade object right here i'm going to go to my point mode and then i'm going to hit a on the keyboard now from here in the top left hand corner i'm going to go up to my edit mode and go to vertex paint and now what i want to do is select any color under this vertex paint mode let's just set this to blue and then i'm going to go to paint and then do set vertex colors right here. And what that did is we basically are in this selection mode where we have all those vertices selected and then we're applying this blue color to our object. So now we're going to go back to edit mode and we're going to go ahead and select this mesh. We're going to go back to edit mode, go to our point mode, hit A on the keyboard. In fact, I'm going to go to uh, my, ob my polygon mode again and uh, select this, hit L, select this, select all of these little loops actually so one two and three and then go to vertex mode i am going to use a plugin just because it is faster uh but we're in edit mode in point mode here select all those pieces and we're going to go back to vertex paint set this to like i don't know red and then go to paint set vertex colors got to do that for the other dudes because it's being weird so uh let's just go here and uh back to vertex paint and control the keyboard shortcut is control x cool okay so we're just gonna have to do it manually so let's just do it across the board for all of these meshes so i'm gonna do that two thousand years later so after some amount of time we have all the vertex colors set and what i did do is i went into my mesh and i hit Control j on the keyboard to basically combine it all into one mesh so now it's just one object and when i switch to my vertex paint mode we can see that we have all these colorful parts of our dagger. So this is important because we're gonna be able to call this data in Substance Painter so we can make masks for our object. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this in Cinema 4D really quick. In Cinema 4D, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna select all of our meshes right here for this low poly version of the dagger. Right click and hit select or connect objects and delete. And once we do that, we can go into our tags. So we can right click here, go to material tags. I know it's under the commander. So we're gonna hit shift C on the keyboard and type vertex color in all caps because we're screaming it. And now it's gonna turn all black. But the benefit about this is we can go to our face mode here and then go ahead and uh, hit E on the keyboard to select a face. Just double click on any piece of mesh. Then we can hold shift and click on our vert, double click on our vertex color here. And then let's just select other some other color like blue. And then we'll do apply selected. And then we're gonna go to hit E on the keyboard, double click on this part of the mesh, hold shift, double click on this part, hold shift, double click on this part, and then hold shift double click on the vertex color tag and apply a new color i don't know like that and then apply selected and then hit e on the keyboard double click on the hilt then hold shift double click on the vertex color new color new color and the number one thing you also want to do is make sure that you select a different color that is substantially different than any other colors and then last time hold shift and then uh, double click on that. And then from here, because we already know that we want, um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna assume that we want this blade to also match this little piece. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, with this color picker, go ahead and select that color and then hit apply selected. So now we have our dagger good to go. So what I'm gonna do from this point is I'm gonna go to file, export, FBX and export this mesh out. Now I'm gonna do two versions. I'm gonna have one from Blender and one from Cinema 4D. So make sure that when we hit the export FBX section, uh, we 
uh, make sure that we select vertex colors. That's very important for the Substance Painter workflow. Let's go ahead and click OK, and we'll just drop this somewhere on our computer. We'll call this uh, Dagger, Dagger Mask Cuts, and then click OK. Call this C4D. Sweet. Now we're going to do the same thing from Blender really quick. So in Blender, we're going to take this mesh that we have, go to object mode, and from here, we are going to uh, export the dagger out. But before I do that, I need to share with you one more quick thing for this workflow to work. If I go to my material tab, we can see here that I have a single material for this object. Same thing with Cinema 4D. If we go to our materials, we I do have a lot of different materials, but it, this dagger only has one material, M underscore ruined ice dirk. And the reason why we do this is rather than having one material for the pommel, one material for each of the loops, so th one, two, three, four, five, six materials, we just have one. And then with all of that, all of the UVs are packed in a very nice way for our mesh to work correctly. So all that being said, we do this workflow because it makes it so that we can have a uh, easy time in Substance Painter. So back to Blender really quick. I will just go to File, Export, FBX. And we'll call this RID Blade Blender. And then we're gonna go scroll down in the uh, options for our mesh. We need to make sure that we have vertex colors sRGB enabled. We don't want vertex colors set to none. Okay. So now from here, we're going to hit export FBX. Now we can go to Substance Painter. Two hours later. With Substance Painter open, I'm going to go ahead and import that dagger. So I have my folder right here. And we'll just take the one from Cinema 4D, but for Blender and Cinema 4D, it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Click and drag, drop into Substance Painter. You don't need to do any fancy settings for your workflow. So let's just set the document resolution to 4K because we can. For most assets, for games, 2K is fine, but I'm a monster. Click OK. And now we have our dagger in the scene. Now we're gonna hit F2 on the keyboard just to visualize our dagger. And it's looking a little bland right now, but what we can do is add some materials to help let, get this to stand out. Now, if I go ahead and go to my smart materials right here, I can go ahead and find some like metal. And this will go ahead and add some sort of smart material, like, I don't know, uh, steel dark aged sure let's go ahead and drop this on now there's gonna be a problem it's gonna still look pretty bland so if you've never done baking before in substance painter it's basically looking at the geometry and saying how can we look at the curvature between different transitional edges or sharp parts or little nooks and crannies to add more detail so the first thing we need to do is go up to the croissant button and we're gonna go ahead and set the output size to 4K, because we can. For games, 2K is fine. Now, under the ID tab, the color source is by default set to material color, but we're going to set this to vertex color instead. Now, from here, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, just hit OK for now, and we're going to see how vertex color works in Substance. So we're going to let this bake. And after a couple seconds, we can go back to our edit tab and we're already going to get a lot of extra little detail from that one bake. Now, the reason why we do the vertex color is when we have any material on our object, if we go to either a folder or a material, let's say a fill layer, and then we go ahead and select this mask drop down menu and then under masks we add a black mask and then after we apply the mask we're going to go to these effects right here and these effects we're going to have this effect called add color selection so when we select this it's going to add a drop down under this little mask here and then if we go to pick color we can see that all the vertex colors that we set in cinema 4d are now being propagated onto this mesh. So we can just go ahead and select this one. And now this white layer is, this white color is being applied to our mesh right here, only on the parts where it had that vertex color. So I could go ahead and set this 
color to like, I don't know, red and sweet, it's there. Now the reason why this is valuable is if I have a folder here, like this folder called Dark Aged uh, Steel right here, I can go ahead and add a black mask to the folder, kind of like masks in Photoshop. So add a black mask and now everything is white again because the default color in Substance Painter is white. But if I go to the effect and add color selection, this metal is only going to appear on the blade right here, which is exactly what we want. Same thing, if we go to the smart materials and add a leather, and let's just go ahead and find this like leather rough, sure. And if we drop this on, we can see that the material is applying to everything. Sure, we could put it below, and now it's only gonna be applied to this one section. But what if we wanna make this even more complex, like make it uh, rough in some spots where the hand is? We're gonna go to our add black mask to the folder here, and then go to add a color selection and then add the hilt right there. And then let's say we wanted to have another type of metal for these loops. So then what we can do is we can take this steel age dark, we can duplicate it and we'll name this folder, we'll call it loops. We can rename this other folder, call this blade. And then under this color selection, we'll go to pick color and select the loops and then delete the blue because that's gonna be the blades. And then for these loops, we can go ahead and change this to a different color maybe. Or what we could do is add uh, different details under these folders. So one of my favorite plugins that I do use for Substance Painter is called Simple Diffuse. And if I go ahead and drop this under the folder for loops, we're gonna add, get this really cool looking like gradient effect over our mesh. And we're just gonna go ahead and select this like gold uh, a bit right there. And then now we have uh, an easy way to start painting our mesh. And if we were to go into this uh, blade folder right here and go ahead and add a paint layer just for fun, add it in the folder add a paint layer and just like draw. If I go outside of the mesh, because this layer, this draw, draw layer is in the folder for the blade, if I make a mistake and go beyond uh, the section, this mask of the color selection applied by the vertex color is preventing me from making that mistake. So this is a really fast way to make sure that you block out your meshes and I'll say on some, some game projects, this is what they do professionally. This is what they do. Use vertex color or material color for your IDs. It's gonna save you time and it's gonna save you money and save your producer money and everyone's gonna be happy. Now using vertex color is just a strategy to help you texture your models more quickly in Substance Painter. But if you want the highest fidelity possible for your projects for your assets, etc. It is recommended generally to have a high poly version of your asset and low poly. And the high poly is there to add a lot of that micro details that you wouldn't normally get through textures. So I'm gonna go to the croissant button once again, and I already have my low poly and high poly mesh ready to go. If you don't know how to add a high poly version of your mesh, you're gonna select this little paper icon right here and you're gonna find the high poly version of your mesh. You can generally uh, identify it by the file size. This one is 500 kilobytes versus this one is 24,000 kilobytes. So this is the high poly version of my mesh and you're gonna see something kinda like this. We're gonna bring our cage down just so that we uh, are just hugging the inside of our mesh like so. I'm gonna set my ID to my vertex color once again. And I actually haven't tested this to use the high poly, low poly. So let's see if it actually does the thing. But we can see that as this bakes, we're getting a lot of the high poly detail from this uh, mesh and giving us a lot more uh, detail that we didn't have in our texture. So now when we go ahead and look at our mesh over here, we can see that we have these color selections based on the low poly vertex color, but we have these extra little hints and details that we made in ZBrush. So this workflow is really designed to help texture your assets faster. And I hope this tutorial was useful because I learned something cool because I normally use material color instead and vertex color is my new favorite thing. All right. Thank you for watching my face. I hope the time was worth it because you're not getting it back, but I hope this helps you texture your models faster. If this was, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this kind of stuff, I will do more on Substance Painter. And yeah, that's it. All right.
one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.